friends. So, topic I was thinking about today, something I just wanted to bring up. It's, I want to talk about something my mother-in-law calls food value. There are lots of ways to put it. You know, people get very, very specific with their diet, nutritional discussions, and you know, to some extent. The, the deeper you go, the, the more detailed you are, the higher performance you want to be, and so on. Um, you need all those little tiny details. But when you're starting out, you're going to spend all your time you know, in paralysis by analysis, per se. You're going to spend all your time thinking about what you should be doing, preparing to prepare to prepare, uh, because you never have enough information. So think about this, you know, because I can't tell you any one specific diet or nutrition plan, meal plan, any way you want to put it, is the best. I can tell you general guidelines for what is good and what's not so good. Uh, I personally believe very strongly in a, a paleo or primal type diet. Mind you, this does not necessarily mean going ketogenic. I think going ketogenic has its benefits. I've seen some good research, but that's another discussion for another time. But in general, the idea of a paleo or primal diet is eating real food. Now, it takes it one step farther going pre-agricultural food. And that's fine. Let's, for a moment, stop the debate about agriculture or pre-agriculture. Let's forget about that debate for the moment. Just start thinking in terms of real food. Start thinking in terms of the whole food. Uh, the, the term food value, my little girl is talking to me apparently, uh, but the, the concept of food value is eating food that is actually nourishing, not just filling. See, macros... People get all obsessed with their macros, especially when they're trying to build muscle or lose fat or both, because their macros are what gives them their big push of looking better and to a degree feeling better. Problem is that over time, the things that take a, a longer time to feel the effects of are things like your, your internal your hormonal workings and whatnot. It takes time for your system to reset. Um, and while the term natural is relatively nebulous, you hear the, the example all the time, arsenic is also natural and it's not good for you. Um, that's not really what people mean when they say natural. But it is a cautionary tale to think, look beyond just the surface, just because people are eating it and not dying immediately doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you. But once again, in terms of food value, if you pick up a bag of raw almonds versus, say, the very tasty almond M&Ms, which one has food value? I mean, this is an easy one. Obviously, the raw almonds have real food value. Not only do the candied almonds have uh, additional sugar, which you know is in poor form. Um, petrochemical coloring, which you know is poor form. Um, cooked almonds, which are less nutritious. You're going to get a little more macronutrient bang for your buck, but they're a little bit less nutritious micronutrient wise. Um, <clears throat> all of those things, you know, they, they add up piece by piece by piece until you're just kind of getting something that's filling but empty. It's like filling yourself up with just styrofoam. It's not, not, not very good. It tastes great. Well, not styrofoam, but you know, candy. It tastes great. I grew up on candy. I grew up kind of fat. Not so great. Um, but the, these things don't have any food value. They're so significantly denatured. And you can argue to what level is denaturing because otherwise wouldn't we all just be raw foodists and I don't necessarily promote that either. Um, to a degree, yes, but not entirely. The 
idea though is getting back to the source. What should we be eating? You know, Jack Lane said if it comes in a, a bag, a box, or wrapper, has a barcode on it, you know, labels, anything like that. Um, I may have extrapolated there, I'm not quoting directly. What you're dealing with is getting back to the hunter-gatherer and to the farmer. You're getting back to the basics. You know, eat your meat that is meat. Don't eat meat byproduct. Eat your vegetables that are vegetables, not ground, pressed, formed, over processed, cooked potato chips or other, you know, processed things that I don't want to start a fight over right now. Don't eat pasta. Um, you know, there's <laughs> lots of stuff that has food value versus lots of stuff that is filling but doesn't really have food value. I just I want to reinforce this term food value. I want you to stop thinking in specific scientific details about every little you know piece of minutia that actually you know may or may not matter in the long run. Start worrying more about how you feel, how you look, you know, how you're performing based on what you eat. You know, are you feeling bloated and gassy? probably shouldn't be eating what you've been eating. Are, are you in pain? Definitely shouldn't be eating what you've been eating. You know, just start, start assessing and going through whatever paradigm you choose to follow, that's fine, but start assessing what is and, and, and isn't working. If you are feeling particularly lethargic and sluggish after a meal, you're probably not eating the right food. Your food is fuel. It should not be putting you to sleep. It should be revving you up. So, you know, with that, I think I'm going to call it quits for this. I'm rambling. So, um, you know, good journey.